The first mentioned use of the word Hebrew Israelite is when the Zionists called themselves this in the 1800s. The term Hebrew was vigorously promoted as a substitute for Jew in a number of countries, but in some of them it actually carried the day as well. This was the case in Russia and Italy, where Yevri and Ebrio became the standard words for Jew. Many that called themselves Jew were trying to escape the negative stigma that came with calling themselves this. According to the Etymology Dictionary, Jew means to cheat, to drive a hard bargain. 1824, from Jew, though now commonly employed without direct reference to the Jews as a race, it is regarded by them as offensive and opprobrious. Century Dictionary, 1902. The campaign to eliminate it in early 1900s was so successful that people also began to avoid the noun and adjective using Hebrew instead. The term Hebrew became popular among secular Zionists. In this context, the word alluded to the transformation of the Jews into a strong, independent, self-confident secular national group, the New Jew, sought by classical Zionism. In the King James Bible in Genesis 14, 13, Abram the Hebrew, the Hebrew word for Hebrew is Ibri, patronymic from Eber, an Eberite, for example Hebrew, or descendant of Eber. Ibri denotes the descendants of the biblical patriarch Eber, Hebrew, son of Shelah, a great-grandson of Noah, and an ancestor of Abraham, hence the Eberites. Hebrew was never a term used by the ancient people of the scriptures. Genetically speaking, Hebrew means any descendant of Eber. Many of those that call themselves Hebrew Israelite don't realize this fact. Wait a minute. The European Jew was calling themselves Hebrew first? And we just picked it up and decided, hey, we're going to call ourselves Hebrew also when we were never called this in the scriptures? People get upset at us because we decide we don't want to call ourselves Hebrew anymore. But what's the point? We weren't called this before. Notice, it was the secular Zionists calling themselves Hebrews first. The secular Zionists? These particular Zionists were very militant, ready to fight and wreak havoc. Now, how did the Zionists get into the land of Israel? Through terrorism. What have they been doing since they've been in Israel? Terrorism. My question to you now. Did these Hebrew Israelites on the street corners channel the same militant spirit as the Zionists that called themselves Hebrews first? This all happened before in the city of Detroit when the young drug dealers YBI, Young Boys Incorporated, channeled the spirit of the Jewish mobsters, the Purple Gang, that terrorized Detroit from 1910 to 1932. The Jewish and Italian Prohibition era gangsters of Detroit were some of the most violent in the nation. The Purple Gang arose on the city's Lower East Side, Jewish gangsters getting rich off running illegal liquor across the Detroit River from Canada. The Purple Gang was never a tightly organized criminal syndicate, but a loose confederation of predominantly Jewish gangsters, more like modern African-American criminal groups than the Italian Mafia. More like modern African-American criminal groups than the Italian Mafia. They even sold drugs and lived in the same area as the Purple Gang. So. Is this what's happening to the street preaching Hebrew Israelites? They channeled the same militant spirit as the Zionists that called themselves Hebrews first. It is a fact that the Zionists were very militant. So when I hear these Hebrew Israelites on the street corners saying how they're going to make white folks their slaves and raping their women, it makes me wonder. In a book called Hebrew and Zionism, a Discourse Analytic Cultural Study, author Ron Kuzar writes, In Zionist discourse, this break was viewed as a creation of a new Jew, alternately referred to also as a new Hebrew. The term Hebrew in Zionism was a nuance of Jew, 
which emphasized its secularism, its localization in Palestine, and its political agenda to establish a Hebrew state. In an article titled, The Emergence of a Native Hebrew Culture in Palestine, 1882-1948, written by Itamar Evan Zohar. Itamar states that there are two points needed to be clarified before we continue. Firstly, Hebrew is employed here rather than Palestinian Jewish, not only for convenience sake or even because the Hebrew language played a decisive role in the matter. During the period under consideration, Hebrew, as both a noun and adjective, had a very precise meaning within the emerging culture, a meaning which had become largely obsolete. It was used in the sense of a Jew in the land of Israel, that is, non-diaspora Jew. One spoke of the Hebrew, not Jewish, Yishuv, of the Hebrew workers, of the Hebrew army, etc. In Israel's declaration of independence, the Arab states are urged to cooperate with the Hebrew nation, independent in its land, while the state of Israel appealed to the Jews in the diaspora. In an article published on the SPLC website, Southern Poverty Law Center, titled, Racist Black Hebrew Israelites Becoming More Militant. The writer states that, around the country, thousands of men and women have joined black supremacist groups on the extremist fringe of the Hebrew Israelite movement. It's also mentioned that the white supremacist leader, Tom Metzger, stated that, they're the black counterparts of us. The belief system of extremist Hebrew Israelites is basically the reversed color mirror image of our white supremacist group. And ship shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. Chittim is Rome, Edom, and Eber is the true Israelites. Now please don't misunderstand me. If you have a book with the word Hebrew in the title, or if you have a school teaching the Hebrew language, I don't expect you to change the title to Ivory or Eber. People aren't familiar with that. I also know that everyone calling themselves Hebrew don't act like the guys you see on the street corners. But if you choose to call yourself Hebrew, be willing to accept all the negative baggage that's attached to that word. Let's talk about that term Hebrew Israelite, or should I say Black Hebrew Israelite? Either or, it doesn't matter, Black Hebrew Israelite, Hebrew Israelite. Where did the term come from? You see, more specifically, I'm going to talk about the term Hebrew, okay? We were never called Hebrews. Never. The term is actually Ivory or Ivram, you see, but we've grabbed hold of this term and we're wearing it like it was a part of our cultural history. And the scripture we like to use is when it says, are they Hebrews, so am I. Are they Israelites, so am I. And so we use that scripture, that translation of the scripture to say, yes, we are called Hebrew Israelites. But when you look in the Sefer Bible, it actually gives you the actual term. Are they Ivram, so am I. Are they Israel, so am I. You see, so you're using the King James Version to justify calling us Hebrew Israelites when we were not called Hebrew Israelites historically. As a matter of fact, the same people who created the term Jew also created the term Hebrew. You see, the term Hebrew came about because they wanted to call themselves something different than Jew because the term Jew begin to mean something negative. So they had to break away from that terminology and begin to call themselves Hebrew, you see. Even the um, Hebrew word for Hebrew is not Hebrew, you see. And so we argue back and forth because so many people are denouncing being called a Hebrew Israelite. Some people are actually leaving the culture altogether because of the negativity that is associated with being called a Hebrew Israelite. So. That's not to say that it's sinful to call yourself a Hebrew Israelite. That's not what we're trying to say at all. If that's what you choose to call yourself, that is your choice, okay? But if myself or many others decide that we don't want to be called Hebrew Israelite, that is not a denouncing of our culture. 
we are the children of Israel, period. Whether we call ourselves Hebrew Israelites or not, you see, we are the seed of Abraham, whether we call ourselves Hebrew Israelites or not. And so this whole bit of anger that revved up was actually proving a point that I was trying to make when I did the video why I am no longer a goddamn Hebrew Israelite. You all proved my point with all the actions that followed. You all um, actually showed that my reasoning for breaking away from that terminology was completely right and founded because I don't want to be associated with people who behave in the way that these so-called Hebrew Israelites have behaved over the past few months or years of what many people have witnessed. All of this negativity leaves a sour taste in the mouth of many. Well, I see myself as a blackberry seed raised up north in Canada, raised in a white society, steeped in white culture, and watered by white ideologies. There's nothing wrong with how I was raised. My parents did a great job from Jamaica. But being in that mold got me thinking about my identity. Everyone touching my hair was always the case. Always looking at me when they showed films about black starving children in Africa while I was raised in a white society. That's all I knew. Why are they all looking at me, I would say. Why are they all looking at me? Until I understood my history, until I embraced my identity as a black woman and a child of the Most High. So when I looked at the word Hebrew, it came to me, I wonder if the word Hebrew itself as a word is actually a Hebrew word. That was the question. <laughs> and I called up my friend and I said, have you ever thought about that? The word Hebrew, even though we rave about it so much and we lift it up as the thing or the idea that identifies us as Hebrew, is that word itself a Hebrew word? And it's not that we're saved by the word Hebrew, but really, is it another area, another context, wherein we're identifying ourselves with something that is imposed upon us. Was it imposed upon us, that word? Why did we use that word? Where did it come from? And how does it relate to me as an individual in terms of my identity, in my attempt to really understand my true heritage? My true heritage as a black woman, as I stated, but more importantly, I think, my heritage as a woman of Yah. So that's how that came in to play the word Hebrew.